The Roman Empire at its height, circa 117, was the most extensive political and social structure in Western civilization. Building upon the foundation laid by the Roman Republic, the empire became the largest and most powerful political and military entity in the world up to its time and expanded steadily until its fall in the West in 476. By 285, the empire had grown too vast to be ruled from the central government at Rome and so was divided by Emperor Diocletian, who reigned from 284 to 305 into a Western and an Eastern empire. The empire began when Augustus Caesar, reigning from 27 BCE to 14 CE, became the first emperor of Rome and ended in the West when the last Roman emperor, Romulus Augustulus, reigning from 475 to 476, was deposed by the Germanic king Odysseus, reigning from 476 to 493. In the East, it continued as the Byzantine Empire until the death of Constantine XI reigning from 1449 to 1453, and the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in 1453. The influence of the Roman Empire on Western civilization was profound in its lasting contributions to virtually every aspect of Western culture. The Early Dynasties Following the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE, Gaius Octavian Thurnius, Julius Caesar's nephew and heir, became the first emperor of Rome and took the name Augustus Caesar. Although Julius Caesar is often regarded as the first emperor of Rome, this is incorrect. He never held the title emperor, but rather dictator, a title the Senate could not help but grant him as Caesar held supreme military and political power at the time. In contrast, the Senate willingly granted Augustus the title of emperor, lavishing praise and power on him because he had destroyed Rome's enemies and brought much needed stability. Augustus ruled the empire from 27 BCE until 14 CE when he died. In that time, as he said himself, he found Rome a city of clay, but left it a city of marble. Augustus reformed the laws of the city and, by extension, the empire secured Rome's borders, initiated vast building projects, carried out largely by his faithful general Agrippa, who lived from 63 to 12 BCE, who built the first pantheon and secured the empire a lasting name as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, political and cultural powers in history. The Pax Romana, Roman peace, also known as the Pax Augusta, which he initiated, was a time of peace and prosperity hitherto unknown and would last over 200 years. Following Augustus's death, power passed to his heir, Tiberius, who reigned from 14 to 37, who continued many of the emperor's policies, but lacked the strength of character and vision which so defined Augustus. This trend would continue, more or less steadily, with the emperors who followed, Caligula, who reigned from 37 to 41, Claudius, who reigned from 41 to 54, and Nero, who reigned from 54 to 68. These first five rulers of the empire are referred to as the Julio-Claudian dynasty for the two family names they descended from, either by birth or through adoption, Julius and Claudius. Although Caligula has become notorious for his depravity and apparent insanity, his early role was commendable, as was that of his successor, Claudius, who expanded Rome's power and territory in Britain. Less so was that of Nero. Caligula and Claudius were both assassinated in office, Caligula by his Praetorian guard and Claudius apparently by his wife. Nero's suicide ended the Julio-Claudian dynasty and initiated the period of social unrest known as the Year of the Four Emperors. These four rulers were Galba, Otho, Vitellius, and Vespasian, following Nero's suicide in 68. Galba assumed the rule in 69 and almost instantly proved unfit for the responsibility. He was assassinated by the Praetorian Guard. Otho succeeded him swiftly on the very day of his death, and ancient records indicate he was expected to make a good emperor. General Vitellius, however, sought power for himself and so initiated the brief civil war which ended in Otho's suicide 
and Vitellius' ascent to the throne. Vitellius proved no more fit to rule than Galba had been, as he almost instantly engaged in luxurious entertainments and feasts at the expense of his duties. The legions declared for General Vespasian as emperor and marched on Rome. Vitellius was murdered by Vespasian's men, and Vespasian, who reigned from 69 to 79, took power exactly one year from the day Galba had first ascended to the throne. Vespasian founded the Flavian dynasty, which was characterized by massive building projects, economic prosperity, and expansion of the empire. Vespasian's reign was prosperous as evidenced by his building projects, which included initial construction of the Flavian Amphitheater, the famous Colosseum of Rome, which his son Titus, who reigned from 79 to 81, would complete. Titus's early reign saw the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79, which buried the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Ancient sources are universal in their praise for his handling of this disaster, as well as the Great Fire of Rome in 80. Titus died of a fever in 81 and was succeeded by his brother Domitian, who reigned from 81 to 96. Domitian expanded and secured the boundaries of Rome, repaired the damage to the city caused by the Great Fire, continued the building projects initiated by his brother, and improved the economy of the empire. Even so, his autocratic methods and policies made him unpopular with the Roman Senate, and he was assassinated in 96. The Five Good Emperors Domitian's successor was his advisor, Nerva, who founded the Nervan Antonin dynasty, which ruled Rome from 96 to 192. This period is marked by increased prosperity, owing to the rulers known as the Five Good Emperors of Rome. Between 96 and 180, five exceptional men ruled in sequence and brought the Roman Empire to its height. Nerva, who reigned from 96 to 98, Trajan, who reigned from 98 to 117, Hadrian, who reigned from 117 to 138, Antonius Pius, who reigned from 138 to 161, and Marcus Aurelius, who reigned from 161 to 180. Under their leadership, the Roman Empire grew stronger, more stable, and expanded in size and scope. Lucius Verus and Commodus are the last two of the Nervan Antonian dynasty, Verus was co-emperor with Marcus Aurelius until his death in 169 and seems to have been fairly ineffective. Commodus, who reigned from 180 to 192, Aurelius' son and successor, was one of the most disgraceful emperors Rome ever saw and is universally depicted as indulging himself and his whims at the expense of the empire. He was strangled by his wrestling partner in his bath in 192 ending the Nervan Antonin dynasty and raising the perfect Pertinax, who most likely engineered Commodus' assassination, to power. The Severan Dynasty Pertinax governed for only three months before he was assassinated. He was followed in rapid succession by four others in the period known as the Year of the Five Emperors, which culminated in the rise of Septimus Severus to power. Severus, who reigned from 193 to 211, founded the Severan dynasty, defeated the Parthians, and expanded the empire. His campaigns in Africa and Britain were extensive and costly, and would contribute to Rome's later financial difficulties. He was succeeded by his sons, Caracalla and Geta, until Caracalla had his brother murdered. Caracalla ruled until 217, when he was assassinated by his bodyguard. It was under Caracalla's reign that Roman citizenship was expanded to include all free men within the empire. This law was said to have been enacted as a means of raising tax revenue, simply because, after its passage, there were more people the central government could tax. The Severan dynasty continued, largely under the guidance and manipulation of Julia Mesa, referred to as Empress, until the assassination of Alexander Severus, who reigned from 222 to 235 in 235, which plunged the empire into the chaos known as the Crisis of the 3rd century, lasting from 235 to 284. Two Empires, East and West This period, also known as the Imperial Crisis, 
was characterized by constant civil war as various military leaders fought for control of the empire. The crisis has been further noted by historians for widespread social unrest, economic instability, fostered in part by the devaluation of Roman currency by the Severans, and finally, the dissolution of the empire which broke into three separate regions. The empire was reunited under Aurelian, 270-275, whose policies were further developed and improved upon by Diocletian, who established the Tetrarchy, the rule of four, to maintain order throughout the empire. Even so, the empire was still so vast that Diocletian divided it in half in circa 285 to facilitate more efficient administration by elevating one of his officers, Maximian, who reigned from 286 to 305, to the position of co-emperor. In so doing, he created the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire. Since a leading cause of the imperial crisis was a lack of clarity in succession, Diocletian decreed that successors must be chosen and approved from the outset of an individual's reign. Two of these successors were the generals, Maxentius and Constantine. Diocletian voluntarily retired from rule in 305, and the Tetrarchy dissolved as rival regions of the empire vied with each other for dominance. Following Diocletian's death in 311, Maxentius and Constantine plunged the empire again into civil war. Constantine and Christianity in 312, Constantine defeated Maxentius at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge and became sole emperor of both the Western and Eastern empires, ruling from 306 to 337, but holding supreme power from 324 to 307. Believing that Jesus Christ was responsible for his victory, Constantine initiated a series of laws such as the Edict of Milan in 313, which mandated religious tolerance throughout the empire and specifically tolerance for the faith which came to be known as Christianity. In the same way that earlier Roman emperors had claimed a special relationship with a deity to augment their authority and standing, Caracalla with Serapis, for example, or Diocletian with Jupiter, Constantine chose the figure of Jesus Christ. At the First Council of Nicaea, 325, he presided over the gathering to codify the faith and decide on important issues such as the divinity of Jesus and which manuscripts would be collected to form the book known today as the Bible. He stabilized the empire, revalued the currency, and reformed the military, as well as founding the city he called New Rome on the site of the former city of Byzantium, modern-day Istanbul, which came to be known as Constantinople. He is known as Constantine the Great, owing to later Christian writers who saw him as a mighty champion of their faith, but, as has been noted by many historians, the honorific could as easily be attributed to his religious, cultural, and political reforms, as well as his skill in battle and his large-scale building projects. After his death, his sons inherited the empire and, fairly quickly, embarked on a series of conflicts with each other which threatened to undo all that Constantine had accomplished. His three sons, Constantine II, Constantius II, and Constans, divided the Roman Empire between them, but soon fell to fighting over which of them deserved more. In these conflicts, Constantine II and Constans were killed. Constantius II died later after naming his cousin, Julian, his successor and heir. Emperor Julian ruled for only two years, 361 to 363, and in that time, tried to return Rome to her former glory through a series of reforms aimed at increasing efficiency in government. As a Neoplatonic philosopher, Julian rejected Christianity and blamed the faith and Constantine's advocacy for it for the decline of the empire. While officially proclaiming a policy of religious tolerance, Julian systematically removed Christians from influential government positions, banned the teaching and spread of the religion, and barred Christians from military service. His death, while on campaign against the Persians, ended the dynasty Constantine had begun. He was the last pagan emperor of Rome and came to be known as Julian the Apostate for his opposition to Christianity. After the brief rule of Juvian, who re-established Christianity as the dominant faith of the empire and repealed Julian's various edicts, the responsibility of emperor fell to Thaddeus I. 
Thaddeus I, who reigned from 395 to 379, took Constantine's and Jovian's religious reforms to their natural ends, outlawed pagan worship throughout the empire, closed the schools and universities, and converted pagan temples into Christian churches after proclaiming Christianity Rome's state religion in 380. It was during this time that Plato's famous academy was closed by Thaddeus's decree. Many of his reforms were unpopular with both the Roman aristocracy and the common people who held to the traditional values of pagan practice. The unity of social duties and religious belief, which paganism provided, was severed by the institution of a religion which removed the gods from the earth and human society and proclaimed only one god who ruled from the heavens. This new god, unlike the gods of old, had no special interest in Rome. He was the god of all people, and this distanced the religion of Rome from the state of Rome. Previously, Roman religious belief was state-sponsored, and the rituals and festivals went to enhancing the status of the government. Thaddeus I devoted so much effort to promoting Christianity that he seems to have neglected other duties as emperor and would be the last to rule both Eastern and Western empires. The Fall of the Roman Empire From 382 to 376, Rome fought a series of battles against invading Goths, known today as the Gothic Wars. At the Battle of Adrianople on the 9th of August, 378, the Roman Emperor Valens, who reigned from 378 to 364, was defeated, and historians mark this event as pivotal in the decline of the Western Roman Empire. Various theories have been suggested as to the cause of the empire's fall, but even today, there is no universal agreement on what those specific factors were. Edward Gibbon has famously argued in his The History of Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire that Christianity played a pivotal role in that the new religion undermined the social mores of the empire which paganism provided. The theory that Christianity was a root cause in the empire's fall was debated long before Gibbon. However, as the theologian Orosius who lived circa 5th century, argued Christianity's innocence in Rome's decline as early as 418. Orosius claimed it was primarily paganism itself and pagan practices which brought about the fall of Rome. Other contributing factors to Rome's fall include political instability due to size of empire, the self-interest of the two halves of the empire, invasion of barbarian tribes, government corruption, mercenary armies, over-reliance on slave labor, massive unemployment and inflation, the ungovernable vastness of the empire, even divided in two, made it difficult to manage. The Eastern Empire flourished while the Western Empire struggled and neither gave much thought to helping the other. Eastern and Western Rome saw each other more as competitors than teammates and worked primarily in their own self-interest. The growing strength of the Germanic tribes and their constant incursions into Rome could have been dealt with more effectively if not for government corruption, especially among provincial governors, and fair treatment of the Goths by the Romans overall. The Roman military, manned largely with barbarian mercenaries who had no ethnic ties to Rome, could no longer safeguard the borders as efficiently as they once had, nor could the government as easily collect taxes in the provinces. Further, the debasement of the currency, begun under the Severan dynasty, had steadily encouraged inflation, while widespread slave labor deprived lower-class citizens of jobs and increased unemployment levels. The arrival of the Visigoths in the empire in the 3rd century, fleeing from the invading Huns and their subsequent rebellions, has also been cited as a contributing factor in the decline. The Western Roman Empire officially ended on the 4th of September 476, when Emperor Romulus Augustulus was deposed by the Germanic king Odysseus though some historians date the end as 480 with the death of Julius Nepos. The Eastern Roman Empire continued on as the Byzantine Empire until 1453, and though known early on as simply the Roman Empire, it did not much resemble that entity at all. The Western Roman Empire would become reinvented later as the Holy Roman Empire from 1806 to 962, but that construct also was far removed from the Roman Empire of antiquity and was an empire in name only. The inventions and innovations which were generated by the Roman Empire profoundly altered the lives of the ancient people and continue to be used in cultures around the world today. 
advancements in the construction of roads and buildings, indoor plumbing, aqueducts, and even fast-drying cement were either invented or improved upon by the Romans. The calendar used in the West derives from the one created by Julius Caesar, and the names of the days of the week in the Romance languages and months of the year also come from Rome. Even the practice of returning some purchase one finds one does not want comes from Rome, whose laws made it legal for a consumer to bring back some defective or unwanted merchandise to the seller. Apartment complexes, known as insula, public toilets, locks and keys, newspapers, even socks, were all developed by the Romans as were shoes, a postal system modeled after the Persians, cosmetics, the magnifying glass, and the concept of satire in literature. During the time of the empire, significant developments were also advanced in the fields of medicine, law, religion, government, and warfare. The Romans were adept at borrowing from and improving upon those inventions or concepts they found among the indigenous populace of the regions they conquered. It is therefore difficult to say what is an original Roman invention and what is an innovation on a pre-existing concept, technique, or tool. It can safely be said, however, that the Roman Empire left an enduring legacy which continues to affect the way in which people live in the present day.